Welcome to Books and Sound. I'm your host, Don Beavers, and this episode contains a digitally remastered theatrical presentation of one of the great works of literature. Please remember to subscribe so that you can enjoy new episodes as they are released. This podcast is provided free and offered without commercial interruption. If you enjoy the episode, please leave us a positive review so that we can grow the podcast. Enjoy. This is Castle Playhouse. From the stages and studios, producers and playwrights of the world, your hosts, the brewers of Castle Lager, bring you the week's finest radio entertainment, Castle Playhouse. Tonight's Castle Playhouse recalls to mind one of South Africa's greatest battles. The Secretary of State for War has today received the following dispatch from Lord Chelmsford, Commander-in-Chief of Her Majesty's Forces in Natal Colony, South Africa. I regret to report a very disastrous engagement which took place on the morning of the 22nd of January between the armies of the Zulu King, Ketchewea, and our own number three column, consisting of five companies of the 1st Battalion, 24th Regiment of Foot, and one company of the 2nd Battalion, a total of nearly 1,500 men. Castle Playhouse presents Zulu, starring Stanley Baker, Jack Hawkins, and Eula Jacobson. Adapted for radio by Victor Mackerson and produced by John Roberts. Tonight, Castle Playhouse turns back the pages of South Africa's history and recalls vividly to mind the names Isandwana and Rourke Strift, inviting you to relive some of the great and glorious moments of the past. Rourke Strift, where Lieutenant John Chard of the Royal Engineers has been sent to build a bridge. He'd left the main column at Isandwana some time before the battle, and his orders were both specific and urgent. Arriving at the post in the temporary absence of the commanding officer, he orders some of the men to accompany him to the river and sets to work on the bridge immediately. His hasty, though necessary, action leads to a difference of opinion with the commander of the post, Lieutenant Gonville Bromhead, on his return later that day. Hot work? Damn hot work. Phil, the river cooled you up a bit, though, eh? Who are you? John Shard, Royal Engineers. Bromhead. Twenty-four. That's my post, up there. You've come down from the column? That's right. They want a bridge across the river. Who said you could use my men? They were sitting around on their backsides, doing nothing. Rather you asked first, old boy. I was told their officer was out hunting. Uh, here. Yeah. I'll tell my man to clean your kit. Don't bother. No bother. Not offering to clean it myself. Still, a chap ought to look smart in front of the men. Don't you think? Well, Chin Chin, do carry on with your mud pies. You. What's your name? Owen. Sir. Are you supposed to be here? Yes, sir. Uh, well, uh, not exactly, you see, uh, sir. Only, uh, you've got my solo tenor out there. I've got your what? 612 William, sir. We were going to practice this afternoon with a company choir. But you've got my only solo tenor working out there in the cold water. Well, I hope he sings better than he works. Oh, indeed, sir, he does. Mr. Bromhead lets you have a choir, does he? Well, every Welsh regiment has a choir, sir. Mr. Bromhead is English, but he is a proper gentleman. There's no doubt of that. And what do you sing? Me, sir? Baritone, sir. Good. I can find work for baritones as well as tenors. 
See what you make of that. Over there, below the escarpment, two riders. Gallopers from the column, sir. Gallopers bringing the disastrous news that the entire column has been annihilated in an ambush by the Zulu warriors of Ketawayo at Isandwana. Hope will help. Sir! Get your party ashore at the double. Sir! All right, you heard that officer of engineers. Make fast and back to the bank. Move! Come on, lad, the buddy. Could be. I can anchor the ponce midstream, sir. With six riflemen, I could. This is a situation you think an engineer officer can't handle, Corporal? No, sir. Big part, sir. Fall them in. We ain't finished the bridge, sir. Fall them in, Corporal. Sir. and turn the boilers over. But they've got soup in them, sir. Pour it on the fires. And get yourself a rifle. A rifle, sir? But I don't. Uh, Mr. Chard. Mr. Chard. Commissary Dalton, is it? Uh, that is correct. Uh, Mr. Chard, you've just asked this man to... to pour the soup on the fires. Uh, See that he does it. And all these bags of maize inside the perimeter. Uh, and I don't want these tents providing cover for the enemy. Does he know what it's like to make soup for a hundred men in this flame and heat, Mr. Dalton, sir? Does he, sir? Oh, now, don't distress yourself, my dear fellow. There's your own officer over there. You go and speak with him. Yes, sir. Chad? This is Ardendorf, from the Tal native contingent. From Islandwana. Bromhead, 24th foot. You've come from there. Is it true? Beg your pardon, sir. About the soup, sir. What about the soup? Well, Miss Jenkins, sir. See, he put it on the fire. He did. We have thatched roofs here, Bromhead. No need to make the Zulus a pleasant of fire. Yes. Then get on with it. Yes, well, am I to take a rifle too, sir? The entire column. Why, it's damned impossible. 800 men. 1,200 men. There were 400 native levies also. Damn the levies, man. More cowardly blacks. What the hell do you mean, cowardly blacks? They died on your side, didn't they? And who the hell do you think is coming to wipe out your little command? The grenadier guards? What the deuce is the matter with him? Hardened off. Are you staying? Is there anywhere else to go? Talk to our levies, will you? Tell them whose side they're on. Did the runner bring orders? He brought orders to the commander of this post. To do? To hold our ground. What? Military genius thought up that one. Somebody's son and heir? Got a commission before he learned to shave? I rather fancy that he's nobody's son and heir now. Who are they? The wits. Wits? The Swedish missionaries here. This is their station. I think you'd better get them out of here. Giving me an order, old boy. Bromhead, let's get one thing clear. I'm no line officer, I'm an engineer. I came here to build a bridge. Jolly lucky for you, eh? I mean, otherwise, you would have been chopped with the rest of the column, wouldn't you? All right. What's the date of your commission? Now, don't tell me. I suppose you have seniority. 1872, May. 1872, February. Oh, well, I suppose there are such things as gifted amateurs. If I'm are you questioning my right to command? Oh, not your right, old boy. Never mind. 
we can cooperate, as they say. I'll be here, won't I? Go ahead. Have you been here long enough with a lookout on that hill? Um, not since we've been chatting. Mr. Bromhead, Ketchiwayo is coming with two impies to destroy you. You must talk to Lieutenant Chard, Mr. Witt. He commands here. Margareta? Mr. Chard. I'm ready to take away your sick and wounded. Please supply the wagons. Daughter, tell the men in the hospital to get ready. One moment, Miss Margareta. Mr. Witt. I don't suppose you hold the Queen's commission. I am a man of peace, sir. And allow a Queen's officer to give orders to her soldiers. Now, how do you know what Ketchawai was doing? We have just come from his kraal, sir. He's a member of my parish. Your parish? Are you sure you're on the right side of the river, Mr. Witt? I am here to do my duty. I expect your cooperation. What's our strength? Uh, seven officers, including surgeon, commissaries, and so on. Oh, and Ardendorf now, I suppose. Wounded and sick, 36. Fit for duty, 97. And about 14 native levels. Not much of an army for you. There are 4,000 Zulus coming against you. You must abandon this mission. Miss Chard. Ardendorf sent his trooper to Hauptmacher. There's a relief column there, isn't there? Cavalry? There was, three days ago. Mr. Bromhead, issue all our walking wounded with arms and ammunition. You will all be killed like those this morning. And now the sick in their beds, all of you. I don't think so, Mr. Whitton. The army doesn't like more than one disaster in a day. Looks bad in the newspapers and upset civilians at their breakfast. Sir, the book says there is no king that can be saved by the multitude of a host, neither is any man... Mr. Whit, when I have the impertinence to climb into your pulpit and deliver a sermon, then you may tell me my duty. It is not your duty to sacrifice the sick. Are you a student of tactics too, Miss Whit? Are you a Christian? Sergeant Whitridge? It is your duty to let us take those men away. Not that way, Miss Whit. Sir! Come, daughter. Sergeant, put two good men on that hill. Tell them to keep their eyes peeled. Mr. Bromit, sir. Double up, damn it! Carry on, Sergeant Windridge. There's a good fellow. Sir. The classical attack of the Zulus is in the shape of a fighting bull buffalo. The head, the horns, and the loins. First, the head moves forward, and the enemy naturally moves in to meet it. But it's only a feint. The warriors in the head then disperse to form the encircling horns, and the enemy is drawn in on the loins. And the horns close in on the back and sides. Finish. It looks uh, jolly simple, doesn't it? Oh, it's uh, a jolly deadly, old boy. <laughs> well done, Ardendorf. We'll make an Englishman of you yet. No, thanks. I'm a boar. The Zulus are the enemies of my blood. What are you doing here? You don't object to our help, I hope. <laughs> it all depends on what you damned English want for it afterwards. All right. Hospital, church, cattle crawl, stables. An outside perimeter joining the buildings here and here. Now, we don't move out to meet the faint of the buffalo head. We hold the outside perimeter. If and when that collapses, we move back into... Of this area here. How high can you build a wall there, Bromhead? Well, it should be about shoulder high. But if the Fuzzies moved out of Islandwana immediately, they could be here, well, now. It's just a matter of time. And we'll have to make the time. You mean your only plan is to stand behind a few feet of mealy bags and wait for the attack? That's right. We wait. If 1,200 men couldn't hold a defensive position this morning, what chance have we with 100? Listen, old boy, I'll take the company up into the hills. I know exactly how to disperse them. Ambush, you see. We cut them down in the passes. Romhead, I want that line of boxes across here, from the cattle crawl to the outside perimeter. And if they get over this, the redoubt. The final redoubt here. I got it, 
did it all sort it out? We... Company. What are you doing here, miss? You are all to be evacuated soon. In the wagons. Who says? My father. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Your father, eh? You and me hooking Mr. Chard's orders in this room. Here we are. Hey, what are you talking about? I'm sick. I'm excused duty. What are you doing? Oh, I'm making a loophole, see? Me and Hookie's going to fight in here, aren't we, Hookie? You're joking. I'm sick. Nobody's got any right to ask me to muck around in a flaming battle. I'm getting out. Private Hook! Yeah. Yes, Sergeant. I know you, Hook. Yeah, you ought to. You're no good, Hook. They gave us you because you are no good to anyone except the Queen and Sergeant Maxfield. Thank you very much to both of you. Take his rifle hook and get to it. I'll make a soldier of you yet. The what for? Did I ever see a Zulu walk down the city road? No. So what am I doing here? You are here because you were a thief. Yeah. And you still are one. Certainly. Hook, my lad. And now you can be a soldier, like what they pay you for. Look, you've got me 28 days filled punishment in Brecon. Isn't that enough? Hmm? Pick up the bayonet and help Williams. And put your duty on! Can I help anyone? There will be wagons soon uh, to take you away. He's dying. There's nothing you can do. Nothing? There must be. Shut up! I pay attention. For any walking sick without rifles. Me. You, Dutchy. You couldn't walk to the latrine. This is not my first action. Come on. Are you expecting sick men to fight? What's he going to do, 593? Oh, I think he wants to be a hero, Sam 16. Haven't you rednecks got names instead of numbers? This is a Welsh regiment, man. Oh, there are some foreigners from England in it, mind. I am Jones from Bush Quinn. He is Jones from Bilth Wells. And there are four more Joneses in C Company. Confusing, isn't it, Dutchie? What's your name, man? She's, and I'm not Dutch. I'm Swiss. Well, he's a silly man, by damn. He's got himself into a private war. I belong to Natal Mounted Police. Is that true, then? He's a Beulah 716. Come to arrest the Zulus. What do you know about Zulus? Bunch of savages, isn't it? <laughs> Can you run next march in a day? Oh, 15, 20 miles, is it? Well, a Zulu regiment can run. Run 50 miles and fight a battle at the end of it. Well, there's daft it is then. I don't see no sense in running to fight a battle. Hey. Hey, boys. Take a look at this. What is it, boy? Flaming in dust, what else? No, by damn it, horses! The cavalry! That's a relief! Got him, you long range sniper, you! <laughs> <laughs> You're still here. You know there are 4,000 Zulus coming this way. We know. Can you throw out your men in a screen to the south of here? You know how the Zulus feel about cavalry. 
No, my men feel about Zulus. We've only just got through them. Stevenson, <laughs> rum here. What price this? You know your whole regiment's gone. Brummett, you know this man. Tell him we need him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look at my men. Stand fast. Stand fast, all of you. Where the hell are they going? Get them back here. Let go of my brother. Get them back here. They're going to die. They'll die on their own farms. You're the professionals. You fight here if you want to. We need you. Don't go. Don't go. Stay. We need you, damn you. We need you. Didn't say a single word to help, Bromhead. Oh, when you take command, old boy, you're on your own. The first lesson the general, my grandfather, ever taught me. Damn funny. Like a... Like a train. In the distance. Mr. Bromwich, sir. Sentries come in from the hill. They say... Hello, Sergeant. Sir. You have something to report? Sir. And tell me. Very good, sir. The sentries report Zulus to the southwest. Thousands of them. All right, color sergeant. Stand to. say after that. Did he? And my great-grandfather, he was the Johnny who knelt beside Wolf at Quebec. Did they make him a colonel, too? You know, you, you don't see what I'm driving at. You're telling me that you hold a professional or I'm the amateur? No. What I mean is, I mean... I wish right now I were a damned ranker like Hook or Hitch. You're not, are you? You're an officer and a gentleman. Listen. That damn train again. at Rourke's Drift is completely surrounded by the Zulus of Ketawayo. And Act Two of tonight's Castle Playhouse presentation finds the small garrison of a hundred men facing an army of 4,000.
accident. Here I come again! Fire! Fire! I can't see a bloody one now. They've gone to ground. What's happening? I've got to know. They're on both sides. We haven't enough men at the north wall. Can't you take some from the south? Well, how will we hold that if we do? Damn it, Ardenov, you're supposed to know. They're going to hit us everywhere at once? I told you, remember, the horns of the buffalo. The south could have been a feint. We can't man the whole perimeter. We've got to outgun them somewhere. Right? All right, Bonnie. Take men from the south. One section. Reinforce the north wall. But if they do come up from the south again... Get on with it, Mr. Bromhead. At the double. Tell us, Sergeant Paul. I want every other man from section one, three, and five over at the north wall. No problem. Yeah. Okay. All right, at the double. First two. Come on. Come on. Where would you like me? Take your own ground. It's your country, isn't it? Who left the door open? Please, it's where the duty they get out. I'd say off the bodies of your regiment at San Luana. Well, that's a bit of hell. Our own damn rifles. Sir! Is your section now? Sir. Let's see if you can keep the heads of those marksmen down. Seen out of it. No, Copper. Fire and smoke. Keep them pinned down on us. Mr. Bromham! Not the best of shots, are they? Get a platoon together! I'll need more than one, old boy, if I'm going up there after them. You're not going up there after them. Get a platoon of good bayonet men. Take them head on at anything that breaks through or our lines weak. Ah, oh, it's still a holding action, is it? That's right. You're double to plug the gaps on the inside. And get yourself a good target. Yes, sir. Here they come! No more! Body fire present! At 100 yards! Fire! Reload! Independent! Fire at will! Charlie, you all right? Corporal, tell the professor. Take him out. That's Corporal. Now listen, old boy. You're not perfect, huh? Release. 
church roof. Have them support your fire against the hillside. Corporal. Sir. Section on the roof. Bring your rifles about on the hillside. Fire at the smoke. The men of the hospital loopholes. Sir. They have nothing to fire at. Bring them to the front window. Support the north wall. Sir. Color sergeant. Sir. I want half your men. Now. Even numbers. Form two lines. On the double. Sir. steps inside. Form details to clear away the Zulu bodies. Rebuild the south ramparts. Keep them moving. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Very good, sir. All right, lads. Keep it moving. Send what was left to Reynolds. It's fear. Dries them up, isn't it? When a man's as thirsty as this. I could have drunk a river. Thank you for what you said. Hmm? Hmm? Oh, you mean about our, our needing you? Yes, sir. Don't bother, I'll find this trail. All right, lads. Take up your positions on the firing step. Keep your heads down. How old are you, boy? Son? It doesn't matter. You know the sound. Yes, sir. Stay by me.
Bruce can't do better than that, Owen. Well, they've got a very good base section in mind. But no top tenors, that's for sure. Gleaming, see their warrior pennant streaming to this battlefield. Sing! Men of Alex, stand ye steady. Come on, sing! Men of Alex, stand ye Sure, sir. Patrol's come back. Zulus have gone. All of them. Very cool. If it's a miracle color, Sergeant, it's a short chamber boxer Henry point four five caliber miracle. I'm to burn it, sir. With some guts behind it. All the men call the row. Sir. Bye, section. Well, Three. you did it. Me? Abel. Sir. Adams. Adam. 
Barry. Make it. He's wounded, sir. He died, sir. That's sad. Keep your voices down. Burn. Camp. Chick. Who was left in here? I don't know. They had names, they had faces, they were all men. What do you mean you don't know? Charles. Well? You fought your first action. Does everyone feel like this afterwards? How do you feel? Sick. Well, you have to be alive to feel sick. Was that how it was for you? First time? First time? I think I could stand this butcher's yard more than once. I didn't know. I told you. I came up here to build a bridge. You excuse duty. <laughs> no comedians, please. Hughes? Yes, Colonel Sergeant. Say, sir. Officer on parade. Ah! Hayden. Hitch. Hitch, I saw you. You're alive. I am? Oh, thanks very much. Answer the roll. Say, sir. Sir. All right. Now get up into the sick bay where you belong. Hook. Yes, the matron, sir. There we are, Hook. They stopped. Damn you. I want an answer. Haven't you had enough? Both of you. My God, can't you see it's all over? Your bloody egos don't matter anymore. We're dead. What are you waiting for? Come on. Come on. Taunting us. You couldn't be more wrong. Yes, they're saluting you. They're saluting fellow braves. They're saluting you.
the hundred years since the Victoria Cross was created for valor and extreme courage, beyond that normally expected of a British soldier in face of the enemy, only 1,344 have been awarded. Eleven of these were won by the defenders of the mission station at Rourke's Drift, Natal, January 22nd to the 23rd, 1879. Frederick Sheese, Corporal, Natal Native Contingent. William Allen, Corporal, B Company, 2nd Battalion, 24th Foot. Fred Hitch, Private, B Company, 2nd Battalion, 24th Foot. James Langley Dalton, Acting Assistant Commissary, Army Commissariat Department. 612 John Williams, Private, B Company, 2nd Battalion, 24th Foot. 716 Robert Jones, 593 William Jones, Privates, B Company, 2nd Battalion, 24th Foot. Henry Hook, Private, B Company, 2nd Battalion, 24th Foot. James Henry Reynolds, Surgeon Major, Army Hospital Corps. Gonville Bromhead, Lieutenant, B Company, 2nd Battalion of the 24th Regiment of Foot, South Wales Borderers. John Ross Marriott Chard, Lieutenant, Royal Engineers, the commanding, Rock Strift. have been listening to Zulu, another fine presentation from Castle Playhouse. In the starring role of Lieutenant John Chard, you heard Stanley Baker. Lieutenant Gonville Bromhead was played by Michael Caine, the Reverend Otto Witt by Jack Hawkins, and his daughter Margarita by Ulla Jacobson. In the part of Henry Hook, you heard James Booth and the regimental color sergeant was Nigel Green. Others in the cast were Ivory Manuel, Paul Daneman, Glyn Edwards, Neil McCarthy, David Kernan, Gary Bond, Peter Gill, and Gert van den Berg. Zulu was adapted for radio by Victor Mackerson, narrated by Richard Burton, and produced for Castle Playhouse by John Roberts. Be sure to tune in next Wednesday night at 8 and every Wednesday night for the week's finest radio entertainment brought to you for your listening pleasure by your hosts, the Brewers of Castle Lager. So until next week then, a very good night to you all. <laughs>